Hey everyone, this is Alex from warnoffkeys.com and welcome to episode one of my Discord JS series using version 13. In this first video, we're going to be simply just creating our bots and getting everything up and running. And in future videos of this series, we're going to be diving further into Discord JS so you can learn how to make practically any bot you can think of. So with that said, let's get started. You can go ahead and Google Discord Developer Portal or you can go to discord.com forward slash developers. And after logging in, you should be able to see a page similar to this one where you have your applications right here. Here's all the Discord applications I've made. Most of these are just for testing and you can make your own by clicking on new application at the top right. Once you've clicked on it, you have to give it a name. I'm going to name mine Worn Off Keys Tutorial, but of course you can name yours whatever you want. We can then click on create. And now we're inside of our application page and we want to go over to the bot section on the left. We can then go to the right and click on the add bot button. It'll then have a pop-up asking for sure. We can go ahead and click on yes. And now it says a wild bot has appeared. And so our application now has a bot attached to it. And inside this top section here, we have some important things such as the profile picture and username. So go ahead and modify those to whatever you want. And the most important part is this token right here. You never want to show anyone this token, basically treat it as your bot's password. We'll come back to this later on in the video. So scrolling down a little further, we see public bot right here, and this will allow anyone to invite your bot to their server. So if you don't want anyone else to use your bot, you can go ahead and disable this. I typically do this whenever I'm working on a new project or when I'm making a bot that I know should only be in my server. So after you uncheck that, if you want, you can click on save changes. Now, next up, we're going to create our own private testing server. That way we can invite this bot and we don't have to test it with other people seeing. So let's head over to Discord and do that. But real quick, if you'd ever need help with anything in my videos, feel free to ask your questions in the Worn Off Keys Discord server. We have nearly 10,000 members in here. And once you join, you can read how to ask for help near the top of the server. And it'll explain how you can gain access to all of the coding help categories where you can ask your questions and get help from the community. So with that said, let's go ahead and create our own test server by clicking on this plus right here. We can click on create my own and then for me and my friends. And the server name is going to be worn off keys testing. But of course, you can name yours whatever you want. I'm going to click on create. So we're finally inside of our own test server. Let's go ahead and invite our bot. I'm going to go back to the Discord developer portal. And if I go to OAuth2, I can then scroll down and we have to select what scopes we want for our bot. For our use cases, we only need bot and applications.commands. These are the only two we need. The bot will obviously just make it an actual bot. And then applications.commands is going to give us access to slash commands, which is something we'll be covering in a future tutorial. So if I scroll down further, we see bot permissions. And just for testing, we can stick with the administrator permission, which gives us access to practically everything we need. When making an actual bot that other people will use, you will only want to select the permissions that you need access to. That way server owners aren't worried about what you can and can't do to their server. But just for testing and throughout the series, I'll be using the administrator permission. So this URL is your invite link and the different permissions that you access here will modify this URL. So the server owners who are inviting your bot will be able to see what permissions it requires. So now I'm going to click on this and copy. I'm going to paste it into a new tab here. It's then going to ask me what server to add it to. I'm going to scroll down to one off keys testing. I'm going to click on continue. This is where the server owners would see what permissions they need. I can click on authorize. I can then prove I'm a human. It then says authorize. And if we go back into our server, we now see that one off keys has joined and we see it right here on the right. Now it's offline for now because we haven't actually set up our own project and we haven't ran our own bot. This is actually the next step. So let's go back over to our web browser. And if you go to nodejs.org, you can actually download Node.js, which is what we need to run our bots. For this series, you will need at least version 16.6. We're also going to need a code editor where we can actually write our code. And I prefer to use a Visual Studio code. You can just simply go to code.visualstudio.com forward slash download or Google Visual Studio Code Download and you should find it. Both of these are free and have standard installers where most of the default options are fine and you can just click next a bunch of times and then you're good to go. So after you have both of these installed, you want to go ahead and open up VS Code. 
I've done so here. And if you're new to VS Code, you might have this window right here with this untitled one. We can go ahead and close out of this. You now want to navigate into your Windows Explorer and make a new folder and place that's convenient for you. I've done so here. And once you can see your folder here, you can simply click on it and drag it into this left panel right here. VS Code will act like it refreshes. And now this is synchronized with that folder. So we would see all the files right here for any files within that folder. But of course, we just made this so we don't see anything yet. Before we start actually writing our code, I want to mention that knowing JavaScript fundamentals is required to follow this series effectively. If you don't know JavaScript, you're probably going to run into a lot of problems. And I do have a complete JavaScript course. The first hour is on YouTube for free. So you can check that out in the description down below. So with that said, let's move forward and let's set up our project. In VS Code, we can go to Terminal and click on New Terminal. And here we have this console or this terminal. And if you've never written anything inside of a console like this, don't worry. What we need to do is very simple. To start off, I'm going to use Control L or Command L on a Mac to go ahead and clear our console. The next step is to actually create our Node project. So we can do this with npm init dash y. And this will create a package.json file. And now going back into the console, I can use Control L to clear this. And we now need to install the required dependencies in order for our bot to work. So I can say npm install discord.js space dot env. So this will install the discord.js and the dot env packages into our project. The next step is to install TypeScript which is basically a superset or an extension of JavaScript. And if you're new to JavaScript, or if you don't know what TypeScript is, don't worry, the amount of TypeScript we're going to be using in this series is very, very minimal and is some of the most simple stuff within TypeScript, but it does make our lives a little bit easier as developers. So if you're not interested in using TypeScript, that's fine. You can use the YouTube player to skip to the next section. Within the console here, I can use npm install dash g which will install this as a global dependency for any project on our computer to use. I can then say type script, and then next is ts-node. Now, when installing this on Mac, you might be prompted for a password, and when installing this on Windows, this might take a while, and then eventually might give you an error that looks like this. So if you get this error, it's a pretty simple fix. We first have to simply just close VS Code, then we have to open it as an administrator. So if you created a desktop icon or if it's pinned to your taskbar, go ahead and right click on that, right click on VS Code itself, and then click on run as administrator. The reason for this is you need administrator permissions to install things globally. So now back in the console, I can use control L to clear it to give us a little bit more space. And I can use npm install dash G TypeScript and TS dash node. So everything's much faster this time and there's no errors. Next, we can initialize our TypeScript project by doing tsc init. This will create a TypeScript config file right here. Now we're looking to create two files within our project. We can do so with this top left icon right here. The first one is going to be index.ts, and this is going to be where our main code lives. The next is going to be env, and this is going to be where we store our token. So the .env file should never be shared and should never be pushed to version control, which is a concept that I'll explain in future videos if you don't know what that is. So to actually put our token in here, I can say token equals, and then let's say that my token was abc123. It would look like this. I'm now going to go back into my web browser and go to bot on the left, scroll up and click on copy. And keep in mind that if your token ever does get leaked, you want to immediately regenerate it with this button. You will have to update your bot to use the new token, but that way other people will not have access to your token. So going back, I can now paste this in here, and then I'm going to close that file. Now inside of our main file, we're ready to actually start working on our project. I'm first going to zoom in real quick, just so you can see a little bit better. And to start things off, we have to import the third-party dependencies that we installed such as discord.js and .env. So I can say import discord.js from discord.js, and we have autocomplete right here, so we can just simply press enter. The next thing we have to import is .env. 
So import dot env from dot env. And now that we have access to these, we can use them within our projects. To make sure we have access to our actual .env file and its contents, we can use this import right here by doing .env.config. We can add in parentheses because this is a function call. This will then give us access to the variables inside of the .env file as environment variables, which we will use later on. So let's start off by actually creating our own client. And this basically will represent your bot. So I can say const client equals new discord js dot client. This is a function call and it takes in an object in here. And new to discord version 13, we are now forced to provide what we intend to do with our bots. These are known as intents. We can pass in an array of these. So we will add these in soon, but I want to quickly explain what intents are. So intents are a way to tell Discord what your bot intends to use and what information it needs. So if your bot doesn't care about reactions at all, it won't send your bot information about reactions. But if you do care about reactions, then you can specifically say, hey, Discord, I want information about reactions and it'll send you that. Now, some other tutorials out there mention that you should subscribe to all intents because it's easier and more convenient as a developer, but this is a bad practice. It'll, in theory, slow down your bots and eat up your bandwidth on your hosting servers. And there's really no upside, aside from saving around two seconds of typing out what you actually want. So for example, let's say that my bot intends to listen to messages. I can first provide the guild's intent. So I can say intents, and then I can use control space to import this from Discord.js. I can then press enter, and we now see that this has been added to our imports at the top. This gives us access to autocomplete, so I can say dot. We then want to access the flags, and inside we have access to all of the intents. We want to start by saying that our bot intends to interact with guilds. Practically every guild intent requires this intent as well. Next, we want intents dot flags dot guild underscore messages. So now we're telling Discord to send our bot information about guilds and about guild messages. So now we've created our client, and the next step is to actually listen for whenever the client starts up or whenever your bot goes online. So I can say client.on, I can then say ready, and then we're going to have an anonymous function in here, which will be invoked whenever the ready event is fired. So this is basic event handling within Node.js. So in here, you can do things such as connecting to your databases and other things. For now, I'm just going to simply add in a console log saying that the bot is ready. So console.log, the bot is ready. And afterwards, we now want to log into the bot. So I can say client.login, process.env.token. And the name here must match the exact variable name you gave your actual token earlier in the video in your .env file. So if you added in token equals something, then you would add in token right here. Now everything should work so far, but I want to listen for whenever someone sends a message that says ping, and I want to reply with pong. Underneath our ready event, we're going to listen for another event. I can say client dot on message create. And if you've worked with Discord bots before, you might've used the message event. Well, this is now deprecated and you should now use message create. We then have another callback here and we have an argument here, which will be the actual message itself. So now the next step is to see what the content of the message is, basically what is the text of that message, and then reply to that message if the text is ping. So if message.content, which will give us access to the actual text of the message. So if the text is exactly equal to the string ping, we then want to reply to the message. So I can say message.reply. We can then add in curly braces here. We can pass in the content. And this is going to be a string of Pong. So now if I save this, we can go into our console. I can use control L to clear it so we can see things a little easier. We could then say ts dash node index.ts, which is the name of our file here. If you named your something different, just use that file name right here instead of index. If I press enter, it'll now say the bot is ready. And if I go back into Discord, 
we see the one off key tutorial is now online. If I say anything in the channel, nothing happens immediately, but as soon as I say ping in all lowercase, the bot will automatically reply with pong. So our bot is now up and running and everything seems to be working correctly. Thanks for watching the video. If you want early access to future tutorials, consider clicking on the join button down below the video to support the channel.